Hello everyone, this is Bauman. Welcome back to episode 14 of this Let's Play the Calamity Mod Season 2. And right off the bat, I noticed the upgraded sprite of the Stormfront Racer. And it's a very sexy. I really appreciate animated inventory sprites. So, this is really cool. Right now, I'm on my way back to the base because, well, last episode we set our spawn point right next to the abyss. Since we wanted to explore it. But apparently, there is not really a point in doing that until Moonlord. Which, yeah, I experienced why that would be the case. Oh my god, I was just about to panic attack him. Nope, 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 I'm going. Alright, here we go, spawn point set. Now we can go and die a bunch again. First thing we are going to do today is something I should have done last episode actually. Yeah, anyway, it's Frost Spark Boots upgrade to Angel Dreads time. Yeah. And looking at the recipe here, this shouldn't be too big of a deal. Wait, how do you get Lava Waders again? Obsidian Water Walking Boots. How do you make those? Obsidian Skull and Water Walking Boots. Alright. Something tells me that I don't have Water Walking Boots. For some reason, whenever I want to combine accessories, for a really cool mega accessory, I'm always missing some basic accessory, which you're supposed to find like early on in the game. Edit, never mind, water walking boots are super rare apparently. 1 in 100 from a water chest. Why is such a basic accessory this rare? Please Relogic, what are you doing? I mean, the Calamity mod adds a recipe for water walking boots. So... I might as well make use of it. I mean, it spares me of endless suffering. So that's pretty good. Okay, here we go. Now we can make... What is this? Yes, I love getting distracted. <laughs> Raider's Talisman. Whenever you crit an enemy with a rogue weapon, your rogue damage increases. This effect can stack up to 250 times. Max rogue damage boost is 25%. I definitely want that. Well, we will get to that one after we have made the angel treads. So here we go, water walking boots. You will need 5 leather and 8 water walking potions. Then we also need an obsidian skull, thank you. Man, this sprite looks crazy awesome. Anyway, here we go, obsidian water walking boots. And finally lava waders. So there's that. And now we need to get ourselves a harpy ring. And I'm fairly certain that I got everything to make one. Guess what? We don't have everything to make one. We are missing feathers. Yay! So, be right back. There we go. That should be enough feathers now. Yep, now we are ready to make a harpy ring. Thank you very much. And now, the rest of the materials should be in my chests. Like essences of sunlight, which you get by fighting wyverns and stuff. And we only got one. This makes me sad. Anyway, we also need one soul of each mechanical boss. So yeah. Now we are off to fighting vibrance, I guess. Also, I think it's about time to activate the demon trophy for a higher spawn rate. And that hopefully speeds up the farming process. Oh, cloud elemental, here we go. And apparently we also have to deal with a vibrant at the same time. Yeah, thanks game. Wyvern looks really thick though, with this texture pack. Nice. Oh my god, that's a lot of damage. Okay, that was pretty close. Now we can focus on... The good stuff. Cloud Elemental be looking fine. And she dead. Are you kidding me? I mean, I know I'm a ladies magnet, but come on, chill you guys. Ah, yeah, sure. Now it's the three of us again. Why not? Good. Thanks for your essence, buddy. What is this? What is this mini boss galore? I mean, fair enough, we are playing in Verventions mode. And we have the Demon Trophy enabled. And I also got a Battle Potion going. So, I don't really deserve to complain about this bomb rate being too high. Oh my god, okay, time to go. Ah, come on, lady. Not fair. Do you want to give me your special item? Maybe? No? Well, that's rude. Yeah, very rude. 
I will remember this. Baomi will remember this. Anyway, <laughs> this was quite stressful, but at least we got what we were looking for. Essences of sunlight. Alright, take off my boots and now we can craft the angel treads. Material, extreme speed, greater mobility on ice, water and lava walking, hell yeah. Temporary immunity to lava, sure. And you will need frostbuck boots, lava waders, harpy ring and yeah, all the other stuff. But yeah, angel treads, sweet. So the next upgrade for faster boots is like post moonlord or something. Yeah, we need luminite bars. Alright, moving on. And don't you think I forgot about the Raider's Talisman. So, this thing can massively boost our damage once we have built all the stacks. Which we get by critting enemies. So yeah, let's make that. And it's also a material for... Later. So the question is, what accessory do we take out for it? Ambrosial and Pule? Sure, so there is quite a few of you guys who like to point out how much money I lose when I die. So I just want to show you how easy it is to get lots of money when you need it. Step 1. Make a lot of Crabalon summoning items. They are cheap to make and you even get the mushrooms back when you defeat Crabalon. So this is basically a self-sustaining way of summoning the boss over and over again. Step 2. Well, fight Crablon a bunch. Step 3. Get back to base, open the treasure packs and sell everything. Step 4. Yup, you guessed it, profit. So yeah, we made 6 platinum coins doing this. And it took me like, what, 10 minutes? So if I lose a couple of gold coins, just relax, okay? Also, we got almost 1000 glowing mushrooms. That's more than we had before making the summoning items. So yeah, this is just a really easy way to get lots of monies. And I also maxed out the Raider's Talisman while farming Crabalon. That means 25% more damage. And that's a lot of more damage. Now let me just reforge some of my stuff with the money we just got. There we go, Godly Desecrated Water. And I think that's actually the best modifier for this weapon. So that's pretty good. Oh, I take that. Unreal Stormfront Racer, sweet. So now it's time that we take on ya boy, the Aquatic Scourge. We got 9 Sulfurous Sand. And we need 10 to make the summoning item. Really an epic moment right here. Well, let's run across the map to get one block of Sulfurous Sand. Now, where the actual is Sulfurous Sand? Do I seriously have to dive down? Because you can bet your unus anus that I didn't bring my diving gear. Um, yeah, there is no way. We will not make it down there in time to look around for sand. Great! Is this so for a sand? Please tell me it is. Yes! Okay, what even is health? Anyway, here we go now. Seafood. The sulfuric sand stirs. Summons the aquatic scourge. Yes, please. This one is actually not that easy to craft, since you need shark fins. And I don't even know where I got the few fins I had from. Okay, so since I have no idea if we have to be submerged in the sulfurous sea to fight the boss, or, well, if your boy gets enraged when we are out of the water, so, well, basically I will also bring my diving gear. And in case we have to stay in the water, I have to check if the Ambrosial Impule negates the poison effect of the Sulfurous Sea. Alright, let's see here. Let's equip it and... Well, wait. It's less damage over time though, right? Yeah, the Ambrosial Impule reduces the amount of damage you get from the poison but doesn't completely get rid of it. Interesting. Well, now we have to see if we have to fight the boss underwater. Ah, Acid Rain. Perfect timing. Screw you too, game. Acid Rain makes you take more damage or something. I'm not entirely sure, but anyway, who cares? Here we go. Hey, it's Hydrated Desert Scourge. Uh, what? Oh my god. Interesting. He is like, passive aggressively attacking me. Why don't you use your thick hydrated body to ram me? That sounded a lot more sexual than I intended. Ah, uh, I have been in better conditions before. 
but watch this epic comeback now. That's a lot of projectiles. Anyway, the aquatic scourge didn't seem to be pissed off that we fought him outside the water. So I would just go ahead and assume that it's fine fighting him outside the water. Where are my NPCs? Uh, excuse me? Did this dude just murder my entire family? Freaking unepic, bro. Cool, now I have to wait until everyone's back. Why is this a thing? The reason why I need my NPCs back right now is... I want to make a teleporter to the Sulfurous Sea, since we will be going there many more times, right? So I might as well set up a quick travel thing now. Here is a prime example of my stubbornness. I will not accept a dent in this wire. Even though nobody would ever notice it. Why do I do this to myself? Help! Alright, here we go. Put down a lever and we are done. Sweet. A lever here as well. And this will serve me well. And save me a lot of travel time. So, I wonder. Is there actually an enemy that can drop sulfurous sand? Since... There doesn't seem to be a whole lot of it around here. Oh, there's a chest I overlooked. An echoic plating. Reduces creature's ability to detect you in the abyss. Reduces the defense reduction that the abyss causes. The abyss causes defense reduction? Bruh, not cool. Oh, there we go. There's a good bit of sand. Nice. What the? Oh, oops. <laughs> you actually lose health in the abyss when you try to breathe. Seems legit. Oh, look who's back. I didn't even summon you. But I guess I won't decline your invitation to fight. So on it is, you fool. Oh my god. Yeah, oh my god. He is playing with me. Just kill me already. Yep. 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 Ah, oh, I forgot about that. He wipes out my entire town. Why would you do that calamity? Well, I'm back with three more summoning items in the bag. So let's do this properly now. Wait. The aquatic scourge is no longer after you. Bruh, why are you leaving me? You remind me of my dad. I also ran out of potions. That has never happened to me before. Usually you kill enough bosses so they refill automatically, sort of. But oh well, I guess I will take these for the time being. Alright, let's try this again. And this time I will try to not fly as high up. Since maybe that's what caused the boss to despawn before.
Okay, that was not bad at all. I mean, I wanted to have him on camera more, but I don't know. He just loves his private time, I guess, and loves to hide in the shadows of off-camera land. But that's okay. The fight itself, difficulty-wise, pretty easy compared to the mech bosses. Uh, I think it's on par with the Brimstone Elemental. Oh, nice. <laughs> we got the Galligator from the Alligator. I see what you did there, Calamity. I like it. Anyway, the boss. It's a pretty cool boss. It's bullet hell, but not really once you get a feel for the boss and know how to move around. In the beginning, on my first try, I was like, okay, that's a lot of projectiles. What the hell do you expect me to do? But I mean, on first attempts, Every boss seems way harder than they actually are, right? So once you're familiar with this boss, it's pretty chill. Probably too chill for revenge mode, but shh, nobody needs to know. Also, these potions were pretty darn good. Only 37 seconds of potion sickness. Yeah, that's huge. All right, back at base. Now let's have a look at what we got from the Aquatic Scourge. Let's check out Yarim's thoughts on the Sulfur Sea. I remember the serene waves and the clear breeze. The bitterness of my youth has long since subsided, but it is far too late. I must never repeat a mistake like this again. So did he essentially poison the ocean? That's what I'm getting from this one. Also is this Yarim after all the things have happened and now he is looking back on what he did? Because he seems kind of remorseful in these messages now. Aquatic Scourge. A horror born of pollution and insatiable hunger. Based on size alone, this was merely a juvenile. These scourge creatures are the largest aquatic predators, and very rarely do they frequent such shallow waters. Oh, that's it. Um, yeah, so it was not fully grown, and for unknown reasons, they creep around in shallow waters. Maybe that's a hint towards them spawning naturally in the sulfurous sea. I don't know. Placing the inventory to gain immunity to the sulfurous water and increase the stat gains from the well fed buff. Huh. I might actually keep this one in my inventory. However, without the well fed buff, your stats will decrease due to your insatiable hunger. <laughs> Fair enough. But usually I'm well fed. So, yeah, that's pretty good. Anyway, treasure bag time! Oh boy, that's a lot of stuff. I say that on every treasure bag I open, but it'd be true. A new magic weapon, downpour. Let's check it out. Alright. Ah! New rope weapon! Ooh, this looks promising. Oh my god, it leaves clouds of death behind. Scourge of the Seas. Snaps apart into a venomous cloud upon striking an enemy. Yup. That's really dope. Stealth strikes are coated with vile toxins, afflicting enemies with a powerful debuff. Nice. Um, we got Angra earrings and outfit. So I guess this Scourge in particular was very hungry. Angry Aquatic Emblem, the expert item. Most ocean enemies become friendly and provides water breeding. Being underwater slowly boosts your defense over time, but also slows movement speed. The defense boost and movement speed reduction slowly vanish while outside of water. Maximum defense boost is 30. Maximum movement speed reduction is 5%. That's like nothing. Nice. Provides a small amount of light in the abyss and moderately reduces breath loss in the abyss. So I was kind of right last episode when I said that this boss would give us more abyss related items. But does it matter? You guys told me that I don't have any business in the abyss until Moon Lord, and I will definitely listen to that advice. Anyway, let's kill the Aquatic Scourge again, and kill it with its own weapon. I don't think it does more damage than the weapons we had before, but it sure is fun to use. So now, this boss is not hard at all anymore. If you just look at your character, you dodge the projectiles pretty easily. And of course you also have to avoid his head, which is pretty easy too. I say that and I immediately get hit. 
Karma is a... Wait, did we kill him or did he yeet yet again on us? He has yeeted, hasn't he? Coward. Well, actually I just want to try out this weapon. Is it good? It's okay. The damage is not as crazy as I would have hoped for, but it seems to be a good weapon nonetheless. Maybe it has a decent dot. You know, damage over time. And the Aquatic Scourge just so happens to be immune to that. I don't know, but I prefer the desecrated water anyway. But anyway, as a last chill thing today, let's build the inside of the ice castle. Hey, what up people of the internet, how you doing? I hope everything is well and good and I hope you're a good boy and stay at home. No, seriously, stay the f*** at home. Anyway, finally we are back with another faux bit montage. Some of you guys were actually a little bit upset that I didn't faux bib the outside of the ice castle. But, I mean, I placed ice blocks for about two hours or so. So, there is not a whole lot to see. I don't know what to tell you. Unless you're really into ice blocks. I mean, you do you. I don't judge. But yeah, today we are building the inside of the ice castle. And since I don't really have anything to talk about today, let's just talk about what I'm doing in this faux bib montage, I guess. This ice castle should be home for at least four town NPCs. And if possible, I want to have only magic themed NPCs in here. Since this is Permafrost Castle. And Permafrost is a mage. So we will also have the wizard in here. And in this Phobit montage, I will build those two NPC housings. One for Permafrost and one for the wizard. I don't know yet who the other two town NPCs are going to be that will also live in here. But actually the more I think about it, like who cares, right? Once we fight bosses, there's a good chance that they will die anyway and then respawn at a totally different NPC house. It would be really nice if you could like permanently save where a town NPC lives. So once they respawn, they will always move back into the same building. That would be really nice. Relogic, please? But anyway, I got nothing else to say. So enjoy the rest of the phobit montage. Or don't. Listen, I'm not your mom. Alright, sweet building abilities you got there, Balmy. Thanks, Balmy. No problem, Balmy. What am I doing with my life? Anyway, that's going to do it for this episode. Next up is Calamitas, and I'm sure that one will be a walk in the park. <laughs> I can already tell. But yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed watching me derping around. Why am I still doing this outro? I don't know. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a sweet day. And stay awesome. Jesus Christ. Bye-bye.